In the book, Grasping God's Word, it is stated, correct interpretation depends on correct identification of the kind of communication taking place. That's page 280. This chapter in the book discusses the Gospels of the New Testament. It goes into detail on the kind of genre they are, the literary elements that they have, and how this affects biblical interpretation. So that is what we are going to be talking about today on this episode of Nerdy Christian Bible Studies. If you are new here or returning, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe so that we can help this church and its community grow. With that said, let's start by reading our passage of scripture, which is Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. What is really important to note is that the Gospels are biographies, but they are not modern biographies, but ancient biographies, and ancient biographies written by Jewish people, except for Luke. As a result of this, the writers of the text do not tell these stories in chronological order, nor are they exact when telling the same story as each other. One example is that Matthew ends the story of the temptation of Christ with him seeing the kingdoms of the world, yet Luke ends it with the Jerusalem temple. For another example, let's compare this same account of a discussion of paying taxes to Luke and Mark's account. Here you can see the same story in Luke's gospel. And here you can see the same story in Mark's gospel. So if you look at those passages, do the comparison, we can see that even though the message is the same, the wording and details are slightly different. In Luke, the teachers of the law send spies to try and trip up Jesus. In Mark, it is the Pharisees and Herodians. And in Matthew, it is the disciples of the Pharisees along with Herodians. It can also be noted that John does not bring up this story at all. So things like certain details being there or not, as well as events not really happening in a chronology, is going to affect the way that you interpret the text. So one way that this might change how you approach the text is looking for where this same story occurs in another gospel to get the best understanding of what is going on. But here's the question, why are the gospels different? What should we as readers do with this information? And here are a couple things to consider. One of them is theological aims. The Gospels tell their stories for different reasons. For example, it makes sense that Luke would put the temple last in the temptation because Luke features Jerusalem frequently in his writing. Matthew puts the kingdoms last in the temptation because the kingdom of God is a central concept to his gospel. Another factor to consider is the fact that this is a different genre than that of today's writings. One indicator of this is that even though the superscription says Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know, in our modern printed Bibles, the texts themselves never identify themselves as the author. This means they are anonymous. Why is this the case? I think it in part has to do with the fact that the text is written by Jewish people who see themselves as the continuation of the historical books of the Old Testament, which were also anonymous. And you can check out these sources that I will provide in the description below for more information on that. This means, again, that they are not just Greco-Roman or historical biographies, but ones heavily influenced by the Old Testament, which should be apparent to anyone who reads it. It is important to keep these things in mind when reading the gospel narratives. So now that we have an understanding of the genre of the gospels, how do we read them? Here are a few things to ask yourself and to do when you are reading the gospels. Ask the basic questions like who, what, when, where, why, and how. 
ask if the author interprets the story for you. For example, in John 2 verses 19 through 21, Jesus says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And the gospel itself interprets Jesus saying as the temple being a reference to Jesus' body, as he says here in verse 21. Uh, take note of any repeated themes or ideas or words in the text. Note places where the author quotes a character and see other places where the story appears in the Gospels if it does. Another thing you can do is that if you're looking at a collection of stories in the chapter, see what the main themes and principles of that collection are. So, as we can see, you will interpret and understand different books of the Bible differently based upon the genre you think the book is in. Since the Gospels are ancient biographies influenced by Jewish and Greco-Roman writing conventions at the time, we should read them in light of that. Remembering that the Holy Spirit inspires the writers to write in different genres is an act that respects God and the way he chose to communicate with the ancient audience and with us. With all that said, I hope that you would like, share, and subscribe, and follow this Nazarene church for more good Bible content like this. Thank you.